Hello and welcome to this episode of Leisure Luke. I'm Luke. Today we're going to put a name on an item from Thingiverse using Fusion 360. So I'll show you how to import that item into Fusion 360, make your edits. In this case, I'm going to print my brother a puzzle box. Hi, Ben. <laughs> And uh, we're going to put the name Ben on a puzzle box that we've selected from Thingiverse.com. I'm going to do uh, sort of embossed letters, which are sunken into the model itself. We'll go through any extra considerations we have to make to do this. That'll be uh, some way to customize uh, perhaps a gift that I'll be giving in the near future. Let's start by finding the perfect puzzle box for my brother on Thingiverse. Alright, here we are back at Thingiverse.com. What we're going to do is we're going to download the five thing files that we need, which are all four of these puzzle pieces and this puzzle box without magnets. Now that we've got our five pieces downloaded, we can go into Fusion 360. Now we're going to want to import the puzzle box because that's the part that we're going to emboss Ben's name on. Go in File and Open. And then I'm going to open from my computer on my downloads page the puzzle box. Now this puzzle box was opened as a mesh file which we can't edit. You may need to right click your document settings and if your capture design history is turned on you should turn it off. Mine is already turned off. Then you can select bodies and select mesh body and then right click and convert your mesh to B rep. Click OK. This allows you to have an editable body in Fusion 360. The next thing we want to do is put my brother's name on it. We're going to do that by creating a sketch using this create sketch key. After you hit Create Sketch, the first thing you have to do is select a face. In this case, I'll just select this face. I could select any of these because they're all on the same plane. Now I just need to add Ben's name. I do that by clicking Create Text. And then I just draw a box, double click, and it's ready. Then I can type in my brother's name, select the font that I want to use, and specify the height of the letters. In this case, Fusion 360 imports STL files without a unit measurement. So the unit of this is one tenth off from where it should be. When I bring this into Repetier Host, I'm just gonna have to scale this down to 10% size and I'll show you how to do that. Now I need to click OK and I can hit Finish Sketch. From here, I can select the sketch and extrude, either by hitting this or I just use the shortcut letter E on the keyboard. And now I'm going to extrude this into the body. I'm going to do this by 0.6 millimeters in real life, which is just three layers of the 3D printer. Um, so because I'm scaling this one tenth, I need to make this six millimeters right now and click OK. Uh, this is already set up to be a cut operation, so we'll be cutting these letters into the body. And that is looking perfect. We now have a custom case that says Ben on the bottom. Uh, before I leave Fusion 360, I'm going to do one more thing, and that is I want to put a little snap close on this case. All right, with that little that little clip done and Ben's name on it, we are ready to save this as an STL file. To do that, first we have to save it. I'll call this Ben Buzzle. And now we can uh, export as an STL file. And this this does take a few minutes after you click export. 
Now that the STL file is completely built, we can close Fusion 360. And open Repetir Host. Now these are the puzzle pieces, and I've already started printing these. Next, we need to delete each of these and load our Ben Buzzle project, which uh, will be in your download folder because of the way Fusion 360 works. Like I said, the scale of it is off. You use this icon here to rescale the object. We're going to go to 0.1, which just based on the internet, based on what I've read, that frequently happens uh, where it's off by 10%. That's okay, that's just the way it is. In Fusion 360, I was able to split this into two different parts. But it's actually one of those impossible to assemble parts unless you print them together. So we're going to leave them as they are. And then I put my slicer setting in for um, a PLA. And I hit slice with my Cura slicer, which I've just been using that. It hasn't caused me any problems yet. And just like that, we have our print plan for our uh, 3D print. And if we look at the bottom side, we'll see our custom uh, name inscribed on the bottom. Which is perfect for GIFs. Now we hit save for SD print and we will put it on our flash drive. Now that we've got our files on a flash drive, let's roll the print montage. Alright, overall, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I think that this lettering on this box looks just great. It's super personalized, and if you're going to be giving people 3D printed plastic things for Christmas, uh, it's nice to dress it up a little bit by adding a name. The other thing I want to say is this puzzle box is actually really difficult. I did the easy side in about five minutes, but when I was watching TV last night, I was trying to do the hard side, and uh, after like an hour and a half, I was unable to solve it. So Ben, enjoy that when I give this to you uh, this holiday season. I do want to say a few things about FreeCAD. Uh, if you're going to be doing the same thing in FreeCAD, here are the issues that I ran into. Particularly with this print, when I imported it as an STL, I was able to create a mesh object, which then makes it editable in FreeCAD, but I was not able to make it a solid body. And without being a solid body, all I could do is add letters to it. I couldn't sync the letters in like I wanted to. The other problem is their text files aren't natively built into the program. So they ask you to grab a font file from your computer. And with a Windows computer that's under C slash Windows slash fonts, and I wasn't able to access those fonts, so I ended up copying my font folder to my desktop, and then you can view the fonts from there. So if you're using FreeCAD, hopefully those couple of tips help. I was using a free version of Fusion 360, and I think Fusion 360 does a really good job when all you're doing is adding some text to something. I'm happy with the process, always happy with my Artillery Sidewinder X1. I will be doing a new video on that coming up soon. Uh, I've had it for about six weeks. I have a couple hundred hours of runtime on it, and uh, I'll give you my full review. 
thanks again for watching these videos. I hope you learned something, and I hope all you 3D print enthusiasts are looking forward to labeled gifts this holiday season. Click around to subscribe and watch more of my videos. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.